Hi. Um, we're going to do notes like this for a couple times. I don't know if we're going to do them a lot, but uh, we'll see how you like them. Okay. Um, and what you need out while you are watching this video is you're going to need this color copy of um, your geologic time scale. You're going to need this copy of your geologic time scale. And then you're going to need these notes um, that you have that you picked up when you came in this morning. Um, okay, so first thing is I want you to just look at this for a minute and write down three observations that you see about this time scale. Okay, if you need to pause this, please go ahead. Okay, this might have been one of the things that you saw, but what do you notice about the scale specifically? I want you to look at, let's see. Uh, this time scale and this time scale. All right, remember when we used the scale on um, when we were doing the solar system? Okay. So what I hope that you are seeing is that this right here, um, there's a lot, it's like scrunched up a lot more. This over here, this goes by 5 million years. That's all. 5 million years, which is nothing in this whole scheme of things. But this right here, um, this is very different. Okay. This is 1500. This is 200. 150 million years. Okay. This right here is 20 million years, 250 million years. So what I hope that you see here is that what this means is that over here, the Precambrian, which is these three eons, the Hadean, the Archaean, and the Proterozoic, they were a lot longer than all this other stuff, okay? If you were to just look at this, it looks like, oh, it's about a fourth of the time on Earth, but it's not. The Precambrian, which is these three eons, the Hadean, the Archaean, and the Proterozoic, those three together make up three-fourths of the Earth's history, like, quite a bit more than that, actually. It's, I think it's 88%. If you look at your um, black and white time scale, it says that there's a little pie graph there. Okay. So the Precambrian was huge. Um, and it's kind of like on the solar system, how we said that you never really notice like how huge the space is between Mars and Jupiter. Um, and how far, like how much closer everything is like in the inner planets and how much farther everything is spaced out. Same thing here. You don't really notice how this stuff is so spread out. And then this stuff is all like bunched together. Like this was a very, very small amount of time in the whole grand scheme of things. Okay. Um, okay. So this also asks you what the four eons are. Okay. And so we've said the Hadean. We talked about this once. The Hadean, it comes from the word Hades and it's just when the earth is cooling. So there, this is really early. If you look at the black and white one, that's where the moon forms. Okay. The earth is cooling. Uh, land is solidifying. The atmosphere is kind of, um, changing, you know, from the first to the second to the third. So, you know, this is very, very early. That's the Hadean. Then we have the Archaean. And I hope that this reminds you of biology when you learned about archaebacteria. Okay. This is when we had um, our uh, earliest life and it was just single-celled organisms and they were um, 
bacteria. So they were prokaryotic cells. And then up here in the proterozoic, we start having some um, eukaryotic um, organisms. Okay, so these are the three. We have the Hadean, the Archaean, and the Proterozoic. And then this whole thing here is called the Phanerozoic. Okay, and that is P-H-A-N-E-R-O-Z-O-I-C. Uh, I'm going to try this. Fan. Fan air. Oh, zo, phanerozoic. Okay. All right. So if we look, that's how you spell it. That's the fourth um, eon. And you can see up here. See, these are eons. Those are the biggest um, time periods. Over here, this goes, it starts at periods. It doesn't even do eras anymore. So that's how much this is like squished up. And this is all spread out. Okay. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Here, if you look at this, this is the Archaean. I'm sorry. It's been a long day, y'all. This is the Hadean right here. And you can see the moon forms. Land is starting to appear. And then up here, we have this supercontinent, Valabra, Val Valbara. Um, I know you guys are familiar with Pangaea. It was really late. So it's way over here. Um, this is a super early, like the, maybe the first one. And then we have our first living things here. We have another supercontinent here. So you can see like this is such a long time. Um, we've moved from one supercontinent to another and we've started to get some prokaryotic cells here. Okay, so this is the Archaean uh, time eon. Then up here we have the proterozoic um, and then we have eukaryotic cells up here and we have um, our first kind of like fossils of animals that we recognize. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. So we um, we start to see at the Edicarian, um, we start to see multicellular organisms that we kind of first, they're not just single cells. So they're all very small. Um, some They're weird. Like we don't see very many things there that we recognize as an animal today. Um, and there's not a lot of fossils at that time. Um, so this is very early life and we don't have a whole lot of um, fossils there. Then we, um, we get this huge dump of fossils called the Burgess Shale. It's really cool. I love talking about the Burgess Shale. I remember so clearly in college, like this really cool class that I took, and we talked a lot about the Burgess Shale. So this is in the Canadian Rockies, and it's a whole bunch of soft parts that um, got preserved. So, and you remember that's kind of rare, right? When we talked about, um, uh, when we talked about our fossils. So um, what we need to know about the Burgess Shale, it's in the Cambrian. So there's you know, quite a bit of time, like, I don't know if it's that much, but between the Edicarian and the Burgess Shale, which is in the um, Cambrian, there was this huge explosion of stuff. Okay, so the Burgess Shale shows a huge jump for the complexity of all of these animals. Um, and then this is just a picture of kind of when the Edicarian or Ediacarian is, and it shows a picture of what the earth looks like then. I took this from the um, uh, the Wikipedia page. Um, so here's the Hadean and the Archaean and the Proterozoic and the Phanerozoic. And so you can kind of see right here that it's just at the very end of the Proterozoic. And then we have this Cambrian explosion. So this is 
uh, I guess the Burgess Shale is like right around here. And um, this is when we see like we see our little tree of life, like kind of poking along you know, barely branching out. Oh, we have prokaryotes and then we have eukaryotes. And then all of a sudden we have all of this stuff and it happened pretty fast in geological terms. Um, okay. So this shows the, the Cambrian expo explosion. It's sometimes called the biological big bang. And it shows a very sudden diversification of uh, of life, of animal life specifically. And it lasted for about 20 million years. Um, so it lasted for a good amount of time, but it was, it was just a huge uh, diversification. We don't see a lot of times when we go from something like the Edicarian to the Burgess Shale, like to the middle Cambrian, and we see that many changes. But this was a, just like a huge number of changes in life. Um, okay. Um, so all these marine invertebrates in the Burgess Shale, they clearly lived in the ocean, right? Like they, you can see fins and they, I mean, this is even before fins actually. Um, but it was all these soft bodied, uh, invertebrates and they were found at the top of the Canadian Rockies. So how does that show that the environment changed? Well, it shows that what used to be literally the bottom of the ocean is now the top of a mountain. So you can see that there are some huge changes going on in earth, right? And you can imagine how long that took for these, this land to get from the bottom of the ocean all the way up here. Remember we talked about how like when fossils uh, are forming, it's like watching a mountain grow, right? It grows like a centimeter a year. So this tiny little trilobite, it was on the floor of the ocean and it became a fossil, which, you know, took millions of years. And then it started this huge journey, like up to the top of these mountains. So it shows that there was a huge change in the environment. Okay, then let's see. We have kind of the evolution of vertebrates, okay? The Burgess Shale doesn't have any vertebrates. They're all invertebrates and they are all um, in the water. They're all marine invertebrates. Um, they did have, there were animals with this nerve cord along their backs. It's called a notochord and that, is what evolved into backbones, okay? And so then it's known as vertebrates. We're vertebrates. I know you guys probably learned about this in seventh grade, but any animal with a backbone is a vertebrate. And the earliest vertebrates were simple fish with soft skeletons and no jaws, right? So they were weird looking stuff like this, right? Then when they were transitioning to land dwelling animals, which we see for the very first time, um, you know, pretty solidly after the Cambrian, um, they have to transition to land. So they have to be able to breathe air. And then these fleshy fins, they kind of, uh, turn into legs, right? Um, you see this picture all the time. There is a fossil that looks like this, but I don't know why they always make it green and they always make it look just like this. But so they would come out of the water and they could still breathe. They had some kind of a early lung, but they were amphibians. And so if I just have a picture here of frog eggs and alligator eggs. So amphibians like frogs and salamanders, they're still very dependent on water. They can't reproduce without water. This is what their eggs look like. Like they have to be in water. They will dry out instantly if they're not. Um, and then reptiles, uh, well, and their skin will dry out too. Reptiles are different though, right? Like you can, they can dry out. Think of like a tortoise. Um, they have a watertight skin and they also have um, a reproductive system that worked outside of water. It was the evolution of this kind of egg called an amniote egg. And um, they didn't need water. They could survive without water. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so where it says modern groups on your notes, I would say amphibians and reptiles. Um, and then at the bottom, how do we know all of this stuff? How do we know this? Like this could be a whole bunch of, you know, lies that I'm telling you. But the reason that we know this, of course, is that we have all of these fossils. Like we can literally see it in the fossil record as we go on in time, like as we find these um or like later and later, so closer to the present animals, we see these things changing. Like you literally see, um, first they have a nerve cord on their back, then they have a backbone, right? Then they have these soft skeletons and no jaws. Then they have jaws, you know? Um, then you can see that they still have to live in water and you can maybe still see gills, but then you see eventually they don't have gills anymore. Um, there are still some amphibians, but we just have different groups adapting, you know, in different ways. Um, okay. So we know that this happened because of the fossil record. You can literally see fossils with these features as we go through time. Um, and that's all, you guys. Thank you. Now you're going to go and do the assignment.